Welcome to Texas Motor Speedway. I know you've been here before for a little test uh, with Kevin Harvick, but today I heard you had a little two-seater ride. You had a little fun today? Yeah, it was a blast. You know, uh, a little bit different than NASCAR. Um, <clears throat> the airflow, the the way that you got to maneuver your head, the way you got to fight the wind, uh, definitely in the curves uh, and the straightaway. It's a huge experience. Uh, been in the NASCAR a couple times. Uh, first time in the IndyCar. Loved it. And who was your driver? Uh, Mario, he was uh, an amazing driver. Uh, we were hitting those corners, uh, hitting those corners that fast is always a thrill. You know, the first one, I, I knew I had to relax uh, to let my body, you know, sort of fill the G's. I couldn't fight it. But, you know, he, he's always been a stud, uh, definitely in the, in the driver's seat. So I felt very comfortable in great hands. Awesome. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to wave the green flag tonight. You're going to have all the cars, the entire field coming underneath you at about 220 miles an hour. Are you excited about that? Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, you know, the fill, of the, uh, the fill of the cars is sort of the thrill that I get. Uh, to be out there, to feel the pressure, to, feel, to hear the engines roar pretty much. Here I'm going through, and then uh, by the time I get off, they'll probably be back through. Uh, so that's going to be exciting to feel it. Uh, sort of a dream come true to do this. You know, I've been a NASCAR fan for since I was a sophomore, freshman in high school. So to be able to wave the green flag here today is uh, is awesome. And then before we go to questions, uh, just give us an update on, on yourself, when your next uh, match is, and health-wise, you've been rehabbing a little bit, I heard? Yeah, I've been rehabbing. I tore my bicep during my last fight. Uh, <clears throat> rehabbing for the last eight weeks, I think, now. Golly, it's been forever. Uh, and sort of just traveling, you know, trying to get, get my name out there, get the UFC, and travel the world, you know, and then be able to take my family sometimes. So it's been nice. Has the championship changed your life a bit? Have you seen things like today doing the green flag, but other things along the way that is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, just getting noticed everywhere you go. Uh, the fans, uh, it's incredible from, you know, not having the belt to having the belt, the recognition that you get, uh, and being able to do stuff like this. It's amazing. Uh, did I think I'd ever be here? No. You know, but now that I am, it's, it's, it's awesome. Words can't explain it. Cool. Well, open for questions. Anybody oh. know about fighting? <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're out, let's say you're out in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, where you're from. You probably sped a little bit. What's the fastest you've ever uh, got the car up in? Uh, a car, I think, was 120. I've gotten a car up to 120. Uh, a motorcycle, about the same. I thought I was going to die on the motorcycle. Uh, but the car, about 120, before I had to start shutting it down because there's only so much time. And definitely. Uh, the cars in here can get that in, what, two seconds, it uh, feels like. Um, so being able to get out here and feel 180 mile an hour compared to that 130, 120, uh, huge difference, huge difference. Awesome. I'm guessing your bicep's okay to be waving the flag. Uh, yeah, I'm left-handed, so then they said do not drop the flag, so I'll be probably be holding both hands. <laughs> Like you said, you've been out to travel and do some different things. I know you threw a uh, first pitch at a Rangers game. I was there for that. What What are the, all these experiences like for you when you get you do, you know, throw a first pitch at a major league game, wave a flag here? Uh, like I said, you know, it's so awesome. You know, uh, I always tell people enjoy the ride. You know, I mean, enjoy the moment. And, and whenever these things come this way, I'm glad that I'm able to share it with my wife and my kids and you know, friends and family. Uh, that's the most important thing for me. Uh, and whenever I get to do these moments uh, and I get to share it with them, you know, that, that to me, just being able to let them experience this behind the scenes type stuff too, is, uh, it's weight and gold. You know, I, I love it. Next question. Matt Weaver, uh, PopularSpeed.com. I was wondering, I know you're focused on your own thing and your own rehab, but what is the status of GSP and 
Uh, obviously, I know you're interested in getting back into the cage with him again. Is that yeah. still a possibility? Uh, I'm hoping so. <laughs> I, I, I think that he tore, tore his ACL again, or MCL, I don't know. I don't really follow up on the uh, injury report, but uh, hopefully we get him back. You know, he's a, he's a talented fighter. You know, I can't take nothing away from him. He did amazing things for the sport, definitely for my weight class. Uh, I'm just hoping to do my own, and I'm hoping that he's in it. But if he's not, I am still need to make my own uh, mark in the history of UFC. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, if I just dwell on that one fight, there's so many other fighters that uh, could take it away from me. You know, there's a lot of fighters behind me that want it just as bad as I did. Thanks. Next question. Johnny, what is up next for you fighting-wise? Have you scheduled your next bout yet, or are you looking at a couple? What What's your timetable? Yeah, we're hoping for October. We're hoping for October. Uh, uh, just got to sort of see what it fans out with the UFC. Um, if those two line up, because, I, you know, like I said, in a four weeks or three weeks now, one of those two, uh, I get cleared from the doctor 100%. Then I get to go back in there and start training again, uh, fighting again, which I can't wait. Uh, so once that happens, uh, I already want something on the board. You know, and, and there's a couple of fights coming up that are big for my weight class. So hopefully one of those two fights can, uh, can be scheduled by the time I'm cleared. Are we hopeful it'll be a hometown match for you, or will it be somewhere else? Uh, you know, um, that's a great question. You know, I don't want to be that fighter like uh, that always fights at home, you know what I mean? But I love fighting in Texas. You know, being at Dallas, uh, or not at Dallas, I'm saying, but at AT&T uh, is awesome. Uh, to be able to go home after the fights was huge. Not having to drive a, uh, or wait for a flight, uh, that was awesome. But, you know, wherever it is, you know, Vegas is... A great spot, uh, you know. Even Canada, I got a really good following in Canada, so I want to make sure that I hit somewhere that I have that kind of following that people want to come. Take us through uh, beating Robbie and and the elation after that. All the hard work that, that you put into your career for this, and then it finally occurs you're a you're a champion, you're a welterweight champion. So you know, to, to start with that, you start seven years ago. I, I didn't know any MMA. Uh, 2007 of June. Uh, and, you know, the times that I put in, the, the hours, you know, one training camp now I put in 25 hours a week, you know, and that's not really counting my four-mile run every morning, except for Sundays, uh, you know, so I'm putting in a lot of time, uh, and not only for me, but also my coaches, you know, my family, you know, the, 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 the determination and dedication that it took from them as well to get me here. I like to put a lot of credit back into their hands because realistically I don't like to control any part of it whatsoever. So I say here Mark Lehman and my coaches whenever I show up for practice this is what I do. You know what I mean? Like they take control of that. I don't want to know when or where uh, what we're doing at that time. I just want to show up and you put me through practice. Uh, I think sometimes Fighters, they, they start tr taking too much control in their own hands. And I know how I can get myself to the top, but your coaches will push you past your limit. And that's what it takes to become the champion and stay the champion. And what is a, a typical <coughs> training day for you? What does it encompass? Okay, so like, for example, uh, I wake up at 10, I, I run four miles. Uh, that's about 11, you know, about 11 o'clock, so I'm not running real fast. I'm just trying to get one full... 45 minutes to an hour running. Uh, and then once I'm done with that, I eat breakfast, I go train for two hours, and then I come home, spend time with the family. Then I head back at 8.30, 9 o'clock, train until, I don't know, if I show up at 8, it'll be about 11. So I get home around 12. And that's not counting. In between those, though, with the family time, sometimes I'll go and do weights or I'll do some type of cardio conditioning with uh, my trainer as well, Adrian. So, you know, it just depends. It could be four hours one day, five hours, six hours the other. And then is there a, a lead-in time, if your bout, say, is in October, when you start training, where you kind of ramp it up X amount of weeks out, or is it just every day traditional training? Well, so what I do is I, I like to say three and a half months, right? Three and a half months. And what I'll do is the first four to five weeks is 80%. You know, just go in there, get your body used to Get, get it ready for what's coming. Uh, then, 
then I cut it into certain uh, schedules. This is a third and a third and a third. And in those thirds, uh, it amps up to like 85, 90. 90 to 95, and then realistically, I only go 100% about one week, uh, so that way I know I'm 100% ready. And not only that, but your body also doesn't take the punishment, you know, because you're fighting day in and day out. And that's sort of where this bicep tear happened, is that I was pushing myself a little bit too hard during training, and then <clears throat> it ended up popping, and then I finished it off during the first round. What got you into it? I, I, uh, what got me into fighting, I started, uh, I wrestled at Oklahoma State, and then after I wrestled at Oklahoma State, uh, my management group said, would you like to be a fighter? And they called me up, I went out and trained. Uh, the first two times, really didn't care for it, and then it sort of, I was just like, you know what, uh, prayed about it, and then all of a sudden, here I am fighting. And a champion. And a champion, yeah, you know. Well, you know, whenever, whenever I started this, I told myself, "There's what is the goal? You, know, you always got to have that goal. Um, and so I told myself, who's the best and what is the best? UFC's the best and who was the best? And that was George St. Pierre whenever I started. So uh, I told myself I always wanted to beat him and be the UFC champion. So once that happened, now it's about maintaining that. that now this is where it gets hard. So I, I'm sort of embracing that. I can't wait. Any other questions? Johnny, pleasure to have you today. Good luck waving the green flag for the yeah. Firestone 600. Thank you so much.